to. In the canon of scholarly analysis devoted to Vietnam War films and narratives centred around Vietnam veterans, Jacob's Ladder has often been relegated to the status of a footnote, taking a back seat to works such as Taxi Driver, The Deer Hunter, Apocalypse Now, First Blood, Platoon, or Full Metal Jacket. Likewise, much of the critical response to Jacob's Ladder has tended to situate the film in respect of the horror genre, as opposed to the war film, and to focus instead on the film's exploration of spiritual themes. This apparent reluctance to discuss the film in relation to Vietnam also extended to members of Jacob's Ladder's production team. At the time of the film's release in late 1990, producer Alan Marshall actively downplayed the film's connection to the war, claiming that, quote, Vietnam was really a means to an end. It was a plot device rather than something we were trying to make a huge issue of. And yet, despite such disclaimers, in the now more than 30 years since its release, Jacob's Ladder represents what I consider to be a significant achievement amongst cinematic representations of Vietnam. Jacob's Letter may not be a film about the war in Vietnam. It certainly doesn't engage with the geopolitical background to the conflict or moral considerations of the war, nor does it attempt to reimagine the war as a philosophical coming of age or an event from which ideological lessons can be gleaned. But it does capture a component of the war that few, if any, other war films have achieved. Whether by design or happenstance, Jacob's Ladder is a film about the traumatic reverberations of Vietnam, a conflict which left deep physical and emotional scars, not only for those actual participants on both sides, but also within the American pop cultural imagination. The traumatic qualities of the war are established within the opening sequence. While the film begins with a series of iconographic Vietnam War imagery. The sight and sounds of two Hueys flying low over fields and water. The racially diverse combat platoon with its mix of drug taking, casual racism and sexual innuendo. And of course, the sudden eruption of violence. We got movement in the tree line! Shit! Movement in the tree line! Get out of there! 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 The opening culminates by rendering those familiar cinematic images of the war in uncanny and unfamiliar ways. As soon as the fighting breaks out, one of the soldiers inexplicably falls to his knees, screaming, Fuck, something's wrong. What the fuck's wrong with you? Another begins convulsing, blood pouring from his face, while a fellow soldier spins wild amidst the ensuing chaos of gunfire mortar explosions, screams, and images of wounded bodies, the enemy remains unsighted. The combination of handheld camera work and rapid editing further contribute to this disorienting spectacle. Adrian Lyon's introduction to the war in Vietnam is marked by a deliberate confusion and incoherence. Like the soldiers, the audience is denied any clear comprehension of the events that open the film. We are only aware that, as one of them voices, something has gone wrong, and that the problem, as we will come to understand for Jacob, may be in his head. This is also the first of many sequences that produce Jacob's Ladder as a traumatic narrative. Traumatic not simply in the sense that it deals with horrors beyond what most of us could imagine, but more pointedly because those traumas are unrepresented. This particular understanding of trauma is one of the key concepts to have emerged within studies of the condition. Trauma is often associated with the unrepresentable because the traumatic event is such that it resists meaning, disrupts language, fragments memory, and wields such a force upon the sufferer that they often struggle to assimilate the experience harmoniously back into their psyche. 